the music retail show. All right, hey, we are back for another episode, man. Uh, we are, another one. I know, but we're in the studio this time. Yes. We just spent a weekend doing on-site uh, episodes at the uh, Amigo Guitar Show, yes. and man, it was a great weekend. It was a lot of fun. I'm tired. I know. I am too. So you know, I know a lot of people in the music industry just plow right through the weekend. It's just another work day where you know we don't do that. We're Monday through Friday people. We're a bunch so, of sissies. In so yeah, I know. So Saturdays and Sundays mm-hmm. for us is like uh, working overtime. Yeah, it is overtime. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, no. I want to get paid overtime. Give me some money. Du- like double, right? Is that du- what we get? Double du- time. Double Sundays. Time? Sundays. Sundays is double, is double time, double? day and a okay. half on Saturday. Right. Well, we, well so. I'll take it. I'll take whatever. All right. but there we go. It was a good weekend. Yes. So uh, we had a lot of great conversations. And of course, this weekend brought us in our guest today. Yes. That uh, we've yeah. actually been talking about having on this show for what? I don't know. Several Several months. months. Yes, several months. Absolutely. So, Chris Honeycutt from Honeycutt Music. Yeah, that's it. Is uh, obviously is we feel is a guy that has been killing it for a long time. We actually hear from manufacturers how much they respect him and want to do business with him. And so it is. That's an because honor. he's as big as a horse, and if they, <laughs> well, and if they don't I, talk I, nice, he's, he's yeah, going to squash yeah, them. I know. <laughs> well, we we can talk about bench pressing or something. We're going to talk about. They don't that. send a lift gate when they send my product. So <laughs> pick the whole pallet up and set it down. <laughs> he's kind of man. Yeah, now it's right. your work. UPS huh? and FedEx love me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's right. They want to give you a shirt, yeah. huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so hey, Chris, welcome onto the show. Thank, Thank you me. all so much. Yeah, I we're, we're so happy you're here. Yeah. So it was good seeing you at the show. You had an awesome booth. I appreciate Tons that. of very, very cool stuff. Right when you walk in the door, bam, there you were. Um, so I, I thought it was one of the best booths out there. I mean, yeah. obviously, there's a lot of old Les Pauls, old Fenders, a lot of – it is a vintage show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it was kind of refreshing seeing new guitars there. So I may be one of the only people or, or, or a hand few, a hand or, or a few of them. Boy, that was – A handful, man, few. I, I need know, some something. caffeine. I need, give me your guys' <laughs> coffee and I'm drink this coffee. This isn't real. You need some yeah, of mine. No. No. But, no, it was refreshing to see some of the models out there. Um, I enjoyed your booth. So it looked great hopefully you you did very good i know when i went over there a couple times it was busy people in there looking uh i know you sold some guitars but i Mm -hmm. think you'll sell some for months coming up so yeah and we wanted to do a podcast there as well but it was just so busy that we really did have enough foot traffic that was just amazing well that's more important that you do that and so we're happy Mm -hmm. you were in here and plus it's quieter i mean we had guys that uh, thought they were awesome guitar players and they turned their amps up really loud man and we were next to little walter amp okay so uh, huh you you heard it all yeah Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, i'm still having ear trouble (laughs) yeah but uh, that's an impressive amp line though yeah Mm -hmm. yeah they sound great and he's a he's an awesome guy so Mm -hmm. we we actually did a podcast with him and he's got some great stories on air and off air Mm -hmm. that was (laughs) kind of funny which he told us some of those those were great so so. Hey, yeah, so obviously we'll have that episode coming up because we did a podcast with uh, Phil Bradbury. Yes, yeah, and we're going to trickle those out. Yeah. So th- this one that you're hearing from uh, Chris is the Monday after the, the Amigos show, and it may be a month before we get it out. But still, while you're here, while you're in town, uh, mm-hmm. we wanted you to come in because Absolutely. we thought it would just be a lot of fun. Yeah, so. yeah. But anyways, tell us briefly about uh, – well, I'm going to ask you about your store. Um, first, uh, briefly tell us about the, the show this last weekend. But more importantly, tell us about your store and a little bit of your background. Okay. Um, well, first off, AMI approached me to do the show in the beginning and then asked if there was another team member that I'd like to add with the show. And I suggested Cordoba and Gill because they were – uh, both a very complimentary line, yeah. and uh, mm-hmm. we would have ukes as well, uh, mm-hmm. and it's just a full line of equipment that we would be able to provide. Plus, they both agreed to let me bring some of my gear. Oh, cool. So it oh, ended okay. up being an overkill of the – I mean, we had enough booth space, thank God, but uh, yeah. uh, I, we had over 100 instruments there. Yeah, and it looked awesome. Tell people that are listening and watching uh, what AMI is, because a lot of people still don't know – uh, but I, I know we're going to spend yeah. some time talking AMI, about AMI, uh, the company established in uh, 1984, it's uh, Sigma, Germany. Um, and they've been uh, carrying the Sigma brand name for a long time overseas. And they decided to uh, import this into, well, you know, bring it into the United States. Yeah. So under, the AMI, under the AMI, AMI name, AMI. Yes. yes. So for many reasons. But mm-hmm. uh, one, they didn't want to pay $2 million for a name. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, yeah, so me why, not, why not name it your own name? You know? Absolutely. But uh, I think the 
product speaks for itself and a lot of the quality they put into it is going to really catch on i'm turning them on to you guys as far as any any things that go wrong or yeah. you know key goes missing whatever let's sure, get it to sure. you guys yeah. now um, on, on the ami the stuff that i've seen and mm-hmm. you can get deeper into that they had a lot of really nice models that um if you wanted uh, say a, a, a four thousand dollar guitar, and you just man, you long for this, you know, super high end guitar, but couldn't mm-hmm. afford it. They have things in, in your wheelhouse that yeah. may may be hundreds and thousands of dollars cheaper. That the quality was amazing. Yeah. They looked beautiful. They're doing to all me. solid wood lines, yeah. limited edition lines and models, and I'm sure they'll probably open the door to more limited edition stuff. Okay. Um, the two pieces that I had stocked was limited to 48 pieces. One at the show we sold, it was number four, and uh, it was all solid wood. With, and that uh, was a, the jumbo, is that the one yeah, you're talking with about? African black wood, solid wood back Which and side. It was beautiful. It was, it was beautiful. Yeah, a lot of pearl, yeah. a lot of real pearl. Uh, and they, you sold that one? Yes, and they okay. do my card of fretboards, standard on all their models. And bridges, And bridges. Right? Yep. Uh, bone nut and saddle. Okay. And then fully forward shifted X bracing system pattern. Uh, which so they're giving a, the consumers, uh, even if you don't yeah. know, they're giving you a lot of bang for the buck. All the way down mm-hmm. the line, yes. Yeah. 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 And it's been a super successful model to us, and primarily because we take the time to tell what it is and what mm. they've been doing. Um, you know, I know that would have cost them a lot of money to leave Sigma on the headstock. but uh, Sure, sure. In the end, if you don't... If you're not one-on-one with your customer and explain it to them, most everybody has heard of Sigma or has owned one in the 70s. Great guitar. Yeah, sure. Oh, absolutely. So, um, absolutely. You know, that helps a whole lot. So Yeah. Once they get it in their hands and play it, then that that, t- that makes the difference. Their entire line looked great. The, it, it really did. Now, talk about Guild and Cordoba, because they were right. out there yeah. as, as well. And we have a great connection with the Guild and Cordoba guys. Mm-hmm. Um, we've we've been friends with them for a long time. And, and a big shout-out to the rep, a wonderful rep, John yeah, Richmond. John, is yeah, wonderful. John, John's a uh, great guy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and what's crazy is I've known John, and I, I, I want to re- try to remember how long ago – before I met him, but it was a long time ago, and he just left an impression on me years mm-hmm. and years ago. And his father did as well, um, mm-hmm. which I hadn't seen his father uh, in, in a long time, but was a great guy. Mm-hmm. But yeah, John's a super, super guy, and I'm yeah. happy he's a rep. And I didn't realize he's been there about three or three and a half years or something like that. He yeah. told me, and I was like, what? I didn't know you were there that long. So He cares about his uh, customers and employees, and he will... Um, and you know the dealers he will he'll bring a van load up of stuff and rarely ever i don't think i've ever not taken everything he had except oh, really? I, one, okay. I said i'm gonna leave you with one thing so you feel like you're still a you know a traveling rep here <laughs> yeah. but uh, i mean anybody that takes so he doesn't time, go anywhere else he's like he's uh, honey going i'm Christmas. going up to east tennessee today i'll <laughs> well, be back I mean, in a couple days you know service works on every hand like you all your hospitality here to us yeah. and uh, over yeah. all the years that y'all have treated us wonderful mm-hmm. like well, both mm-hmm. on the phone and mm-hmm. when we come in yeah a lot of companies don't even want you to come in their doors you know that's mm-hmm. Kind of lock and key. Call me on the phone. I'll ship you something. Sure, sure. Uh, the open family hospitality y'all give us is the same kind of uh, uh, respect that John has given, and That's we great. in return, it's hard not to say no. But yeah. at the same time, the product is there to back it up, oh, too. Man. I agree, and it's not just John. I think it's the whole culture of that yeah. company, mm-hmm. um, from the owner down. Mm-hmm. Um, in, in January, uh, I spent some time with the owner, and Nate yeah. and, and Ian back here, we spent a little bit of time with the owner. What great, great guy. People. Great, great guy. people. Um, yeah. So Jason. John uh, said Jason brought him on board. He and, did. And, and only did. had great things to say about Tim and Jason. Absolutely. So, so it's, it's just cool. It's a great culture of people. Mm-hmm. So you got some good people working with you. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about your store. Honeycut Give Music. Us, Honeycut, Honeycut Music. Music. In Wagon Wheel, Tennessee. Ooh. Johnson City. Yeah, Johnson City. <laughs> Give us a little Tennessee. bit of a background. When did you start? I started in 2006, um, actually out of my basement. Really? That yeah. long ago? Yeah. Okay. And, you know, me and you are handicapped drummers. So yes. I, was, You're a drummer? I had a drum shop. Well, well yeah. Oh. Why do you think he's so successful? Yeah. Oh, well, Us yeah. drummers are pretty We think outside guys. the box oh, besides yeah. this hitting with sticks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, keep in mind, first and foremost, I cannot play a guitar. But I can me hit, neither. I can hit G, C, and D and then give it back to Well, you got else. two chords there up on go. me. I can get it. I can have a mean yeah, G actually, chord. Actually, you kind of make up your own chords. I it's do. It's actually impressive. Well, what's amazing is there's a guy who plays for a very, very successful uh, mm-hmm. a guy that was real popular. One day I was screwing around and playing something, and he's like, can you play that again? That was really cool. And I'm like, 
dude, I don't know what I You're did. You're like, I just put my fingers on. I was the, just, I grabbed I was the just screwing and around, and but he was serious, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, man. Every now and if then, if you want man. somebody to teach you really quick, Doctor Epiphone, but he's about 150 bucks an hour. Really? Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's really, a, let's he, talk about. No, Will. he said I can teach anybody Will. guitar in 10 minutes. Flat. Really? Yeah, and that's true. He can. So let's talk about Will. Is he a good guitar player? I don't think very, I've ever heard. I don't he's, think he's I've a very ever. good guitar player and a very good singer. Don't even try to challenge him in karaoke. Oh, really? I bet. I've seen the well, he's got the personality yeah. for yeah. karaoke. Well, he's got the personality to be yeah. the president of the United States. <laughs> yeah. And Will is Doctor. Billy Idol. This is You're right. right. <laughs> I mean, he looks like Billy Idol. That's true. Uh, no, and know. the hospitality they have given is just much like you all. I mean, it's yeah. like I, I could merge you all as the same company the way you all treat They're people. good people. Oh. Yeah, actually, yeah. we're going out there we're next going back month. May right? 2nd. Yeah, May 2nd. But they deserve do. huge props as well. They do. Uh, so do you. Yeah, uh, Scott over there, uh, Brad, inside guy, Will. We work a lot with those guys. Yeah. And they're awesome, man. They're, I mean, they're, I, they're I, so I owe cool. you all a barbecue dinner. You know, the big cookout at my place. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Man, that sounds great. Yeah, we need to have a we need to have a summer or spring something before Nam. We need to have a big uh, yeah. show. Yeah, and have y'all up and well, I need to come up to e- and, yeah, I need to come up to East Tennessee. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, uh, that'd be fun. Richard's always spoke so highly of your parents too. Yeah, yeah that that has well, really... I, I often say that I'd rather hang out with them and then him anyway. So <laughs> yeah, you know. But back in 2006, I was forced into the business. When I say forced, I, I didn't uh, intend on. It was either jail. I, I was or a music I was store building my <laughs> well, I, no, I was building my business out of the home. Yeah, and working in a bank. So my my background is selling oh, really? cars for seven years. Don't hold that against me yeah and banking for six years oh wow cool so the tie had to go yeah, yeah you're was, right you're i spent right. the last two years of banking miserable because i wanted to be a loan officer went to school for gotcha. loan officer uh, yeah. and they had me doing everything else but a loan officer oh, job. oh okay and i never yeah. counted money as a teller but that's yeah. the only thing i didn't do yeah i was i i had the background and the build for the uh, repossess and oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. foreclose on the little widow's home, but I didn't have the heart to do that. I mean, I understand. I had the that. body and build to repossess your car and and take the keys from you, but I didn't have the heart to do it. So it was just not a. I had a customer, not to cut you off. I had a customer out in Arizona. He was a real good guy, another smart guy. He was a drummer too, and he was built. He was big, <laughs> and he had this scar that went down the middle of his his head, <laughs> down through his nose. And I got to know him a little bit, and uh, you know, we talked a lot of drums. And I didn't get too personable with him, but we got to be friends. And I found out, and I said, "What do you do?" And he says, "I I repossess cars." Oh, yeah. And I'm like, "Oh my gosh, really?" So we got to. Mm-hmm. He, I said, "Tell me some fun stories," and he's like. Well, I don't have very many fun stories, but see this scar right here? And I said, yeah, what happened? He says, I was underneath the car, and he was doing something. He was, you know, he's going to take this car, and he pulls, crawls out from underneath, and a baseball bat came down, cracked his head right over. But his scar was middle of his forehead all the way down Mm -hmm. his nose. Mm -hmm. And and I said, I said, were you all right? And he goes, yeah, but the other guy wasn't. <laughs> so that baseball that bat didn't put him out, but I think he put the other guy out. My so but yeah, I have that's some a dangerous business. tales too, but we'll do it on the next podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's well, a long story. Well, we're not recording, <laughs> yeah. huh? Yeah. I'm thankful I'm still alive though. Yeah. yeah. That way. So tell awesome. us about that. What what made you get into the the music industry? Well, I had to put my drums somewhere. They started growing out of a two thousand square foot basement. I mean, I had over forty oh, drum sets. Geez. You were specializing in selling yes. drums. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. I had cymbal wow. trees and everything. Just look, it looked like a mini forks drum closet. Really? <laughs> yeah. Really? And I even got to know all those guys too. And I was selling mm-hmm. online. And yeah. back then, you could ship a drum set and not uh, go out of business. You know, yeah, it was absolutely. Sixty, seventy bucks to ship a whole kit. Wow. Now it's about triple that much. Yeah, probably. absolutely. So I was doing all that and. Um, Guess what? The wife at the time, who's not a wife anymore, but that's you know a blessing anyway in disguise. Yeah, yeah. She didn't like all the drum stuff, so I ended up moving out. Mm-hmm. Cheapest divorce I ever had in my life, by the way. <laughs> I made five hundred bucks on that one. But anyway, <laughs> and that five hundred dollars—that's another podcast. We'll have <laughs> yeah, to share yeah, the remedy. That, that five hundred dollars right? went to rent for the first uh, oh, for the nice. first wow. store in Irwin, and I put wow. all those drums and all that in there. And you know, the first weekend we sold two drum sets, which is another blessing. For yeah, the yeah, both. yeah. And we did. Well, that was amazing. Uh, everybody started just knocking on the door, coming. When are you going to open? And I was like, I just opened for the Apple Festival for the fun of it. I'm using this as storage unit. Yeah. And they said, No, you need to open. So I did. Next thing I know, people were asking for strings, picks, guitars, and I started slinging guitars like you all getting stuff in off yeah. these pallets. Yeah. And I did that for a year and a half, and I built it off of nothing but, you know, music link stuff and just small, start small. Mm-hmm. I'll yeah, never yeah, forget. Yeah. 
uh, never forget where you come from. So I start small. Mm-hmm. I still stay small, even though I'm getting into a lot of high end stuff. Yeah, my store is separated out of two sections, and this is not to discriminate. It's it's you got a, a side that's a thousand dollars and under, so they don't get confused. They have a new section. They have a used section, and then the other side. It's kind of a thousand and over, oh, and then wow. there's a special room you can go in if you want a certain USA acoustic. They're all USA and Canadian. That's that's okay. actually really yeah. smart. I you know uh, you know that's very smart. Well, here's the part that we have Coming succeeded from, from. That's really smart. Is I need to know what you're interested in. You got to yeah. get in front of your customer, build a relationship with them, and mm-hmm. find out what they want. Yeah. If mm-hmm. they want a three hundred dollar guitar and it's their first guitar, I don't Take need to, to show room. them a three thousand dollar guitar sure, and try sure. to beg them to buy it. You know? Yes. Yes. Uh, but I want them to know it's there. Why? Yeah. Because once they buy that two or three hundred dollar guitar, and they, I call it graduate, they start getting more into it. Then they want a second guitar, then a Absolutely. third guitar. Wow! And I keep That's them smart. that way. Yeah. But the huge thing is family, customer service. Mm-hmm. We bring them in. We got seats for them. We've got places to interact with them. We don't just let them wander around and aimlessly. Uh, hey, can I help you? Can I get involved with you? Want to know? You know, are you from a church organization? We give ten percent discounts for churches, and and you know, affiliated organizations. So we want to be in front of the customer. We want to talk to them, get to know them, let them know we love them. Yeah, yeah. we love yeah. music. Yeah, it's a passion. Music is a language that everybody can speak. Yeah, even though I cannot play the guitar, I've sold a ton of guitars based yeah, on absolutely. number one faith. And number two, uh, enjoying what I do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. A lot of people come in, get a check. They want that check. And they want to get out at 5 o'clock so they can go do something else. So me, yeah. I go home at 7, and I turn YouTube on, and I get my books out and start studying again. Mm. So, But a lot of how I've learned how to sell is from the past. Car, The car business will teach you the worst. I mean, mm-hmm. the worst is, you know, you're I starving to death. You, yeah. you have a sheet, and you better have their name, phone number, address, where they live, uh, how many family members they got. And that way, when they looked at that car, call them back because they're going somewhere else to look at another Absolutely. car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we do that. We call and find out what people like. Uh, what they'd like to see in the store. And when we get it in, we pick up the phone and say, hey, we've got this in for you today. Interesting. Come down and That's check great. it out. That's, That's exactly good We've heard service, that from yeah. a couple other It's dealers. old school, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm it still used works. to handwriting yeah. contracts yeah, and handwriting yeah. this and that. Yeah. And, uh, you it's know, I involved. still use a lot of computer work, but uh, yeah. uh, you have to have a referral base and a repeat customer yeah. uh, business. And my repeat business is what has saved me a lot. Really? Yeah, absolutely. Now, so how big of a demographic do you draw from? I mean, I know uh, you're in Johnson City. And you yeah. got surrounding areas. Yeah, but, and they, they call it the Tri Cities right now, and I hope they keep it that way. They're trying to change the name to some weird long name, and when Rick's been talking about that, yeah. it's yeah. not <laughs> it's not very uh, practical, and they're spending a lot of money for nothing. But yeah, it's the Tri Cities, and it's uh, Johnson City, Kingsport, Bristol, that area, that region, and, and we see it uh, between thirty and forty minute drive from North Carolina, Virginia. Yeah, even you know, Kentucky's not even that far away. I have a lot of business yeah. from there, and in all the way down here. I've had people drive you, were, from you were down Knoxville, here this yeah. weekend, but wasn't the Bristol Speedway Bristol, is all the, fired up this weekend? The race is this weekend, and it, it it can put a little hurt on you yeah. on a Saturday when everybody's there. But we still yeah. had a good sale, you know. Okay. Sale time. Yeah. Okay. But um, so you're drawing from? Uh, do you know how many pe- thousands of people? Because it's not the biggest. I would say place. a two hundred thousand uh, radius. Oh, really? That yeah. many? Yeah, because oh, okay. a lot of people drive even from Greenville. Really? Uh, really? A lot, a lot okay. of Greenville business, yeah. And and how is that? Just because they're traveling through, and they just happen to see well, you. Well, another or, thing that's a, a blessing about Johnson City is, uh, while it is the Bible Belt, there is a lot of restaurants. So uh, you know, all these churches they get out, they like they eating. Go, they like eating, and everybody will drive from state to state to come to a good restaurant. And really, just, Johnson City, I consider it as one of the restaurant capitals. Well, really? Be, yeah, okay. man. I'm. I'm. Although I'm, we, and there's I'm another fighting, reason why I, I want to go. I'm fighting for one more restaurant. That's all we need is a cheesecake factory, and then we'll have everything oh, in existence. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's some of the uh, on the food topic? What's some of the best places up there? Um, well, we have we have a new restaurant opened up called Aubrey's, and it's really good. Um, Rick, you're gonna have to chime in on some more. I mean, you got Bonefish oh, Grill. You, know, you got a lot of you know normal chain stuff. You know, okay. what I do good up there is uh, Puckets. Yeah, Puckets. puckets. Yeah. Would you be ever great. had Puckets around here? They put one in Chattanooga. No, that would too. be a great one. It's good. Yeah. 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 But there's just a lot of restaurant row. Um, we have one of the famous barbecue places in the really? whole world. Yes. Oh man. Yeah, uh, you've got to come up just I'm for that. Do that. Yep. Uh, is, is it called? 
I don't want to say Wood Ridge. It's Ridgewood, right? Ridgewood. Yeah, <laughs> Ridgewood. We got both. We got yeah. Wood Ridge and Ridgewood. So you can get barbecue at both places. One comes from the hospital and one comes from the yeah. But anyway. I don't, I don't want to know where they get the meat from the, yeah. the hospital. Yeah, it's a, hopefully at Fresh Market, which yeah. is next door. But well, that's cool. But uh, we, yeah, we're a big Fresh Market freaks. Yeah. We, we're yeah. in there right before closing. They, they think the world ends if we don't show up. Really? You know, yeah. <laughs> and what is Fresh Market up it's there? It's just a really good, high quality f- grocery store. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's kind of like a whole. Yeah, food. actually, yeah. I think there's one here up in Nashville. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I believe so. Yeah, yeah. And I'm jealous of y'all's Farmers Market. I heard it was like as big as this building. Oh, it's the one here in Franklin. Yeah, it's, it's good. really good. We actually have there's there's farmers markets have caught on. There's one yeah. down in Spring Hill yeah. that's really good too. Yeah. So yeah, the, the farmers market down. You need to make a road trip just to go to the farmers market. Yeah, it's I've really got I, I, my my goal is two retirement places, one here and one in the, down south somewhere yeah. at the beach. Well, <laughs> come on down here and start early. I can't you know? leave mom and pop though. Yeah, bring them. Where I go. Bring them. And my da- and my daughter. Yeah. By the way, a twenty-year-old daughter will make you hustle. Really, it will. It, it'll <laughs> make you. Well, it does it make you want to buy another gun? I was going to say how many guns? Uh, yeah, you because I got a closet full. Because I got an eighteen-year-old daughter. Yeah, and yeah, that's that is a long subject for next time. The yes. gun thing. Yeah. Well, my son, <laughs> I love my son to death, but truthfully, I just I don't give a crap. But my daughter, mm-hmm. man, I I tell you what, I I told my daughter this, and and I and I will say this on air is her boyfriend. They were getting real serious and stuff, and I said, mm-hmm. Madison. I said, you know how many deer I've I've skinned, <laughs> and she goes, I know, Dad. Mm-hmm. And I said, I can skin that boy so fast. Yeah. And she says, I know, Dad. I've already told him. I, wanna pl- I, wanna, <laughs> I do want to plug a big shout out to her. Her birthday was the seventh. Oh, so, awesome. Uh, now, happy birthday. What's her name? Old. Hannah Honeycutt. I yep. love you, baby girl. Yep. She, <laughs> and she'll always be my. She's baby a beautiful girl. girl, she can be girl too. And be, still be yeah, my baby girl. Yeah, she's a beautiful girl. Yeah. yeah. She's got a real good head on her shoulders. Just yeah. got her white coat and nursing, and oh, she's really? on her way uh, uh, well, to be. For her. To take care of this old hell, unhealthy man here. Well, that's right. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of health, yeah. uh, it's something we talked about briefly yesterday, and that was benching. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we do have cameras here. They can see that you're, like I referred to you as big as a horse earlier. Now, tell Nate how much you're benching now. Well, I mean, I've benched 500 before, but I'm I'm still probably around a 465 guy God right now. Reason. Without my shoulders falling Dude, off. I, I've got the best I've got the best benching story. Uh, I, no, it's not about me. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, man, As he looks down yeah, here. I, I, yeah, 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 trust me. No, actually, the most I ever did in my life, I benched, I benched, uh, I benched 220, and I felt like I had a house sitting on top of me. <laughs> yeah. So, But I can't imagine for it. But, man, this guy, he was a, kind of a bodybuilder, and and in the town we were growing up, we were trying to raise money for the football team, the local mm-hmm. gym right there. And so we, during the Labor Day Festival, we got out in the street, and he got all these donors to donate based off of how much he would bench. And he was going to bench about 480. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, uh, man, he got down there. He got on that bench, and, you know, it's good. So if you got all these donors, for every pound he benched, all these people donated would donate so many dollars. And it was to raise money for the football team. Man, he laid down on that bench, and, man, he just he was getting into it. I mean, he, he's, he was hitting his head on the bar, and his forehead started bleeding. I thought that Jeez. was real, I thought that was a little weird, man. but he was getting yeah. into it. Dude, and he went down, and I was one of the spotters. I was on one mm-hmm. side, and there was another guy on the other side. And he went down. As soon as he went down, he went to press up. His left shoulder just went boom. He's like, oh, pulled goodness. up, pulled up, pulled up. Oh, and wow. we pulled up, put on the bar, and he, he sat up. Peck, oh, dude, his peck was yeah. sitting down mm. here in his skin, and his arm mm. was just hanging down like mm. this. And he looked, and you could see he was going into shock. And he oh, got up, and because it, it was out in the street, and he yeah. ran in the building. And that's a major and, surgery to have to do. Oh, with. yeah. My, one of my really? really good friends had to deal with that. And oh. he was not even benching, he was just rat horse playing with another guy. Really? And it was doing, you know, jujitsu stuff, trying to learn some moves. I've never yeah. seen yeah. anything like that. Yeah. That sounds, oh, that sounds painful. So I don't hope that on anybody. But so. to pay a guitar bill. I'll bench 500 any day of the week. <laughs> really? We'll schedule it, have a podcast here and all. Yeah. The weights. <laughs> and then we'll have barbecue. Uh, and if you want to, we'll go 700 pounds and pick it up. Just pick it up with straps. I'll do that any, yeah, any day of the week. Yeah, that's crazy. That's crazy. That's crazy. Have you, but, do you do this? Have you ever wanted to compete in any of this? this no, I, I, I've actually, Rick will tell you, we just do CrossFit. We don't do anything and anything major heavy anymore. I do that just for the fun of it to wake my muscles up sometimes. Okay. Yeah. But we're more into endurance and high end impact you know i'd rather do 150 to 200 pounds a bunch of reps you know to get my muscles just toned up i'm getting too old for this heavy heavy stuff yeah, yeah. i'm not gonna tell my age you know 29's holding 
Holding. Yeah. I just got to find some of that good gray. Wash that gray right yeah. out of here. Yeah. I've got a, I'm getting a lot of it. Yeah. So I'm losing it here. But if I did, if I shave this, you would say, who's this little boy we're interviewing today? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about your, let's talk about your mom and dad a little bit. Your dad's there at the shop all the time playing. I see a lot of him demoing guitars a lot. Yeah. They're, they're, they're such people. a blessing. Yeah. yeah. He is the reason, uh, well, and mom too, but he's the reason that I ended up even being in the music uh industry and love to start with because he could play every single it doesn't matter what string instrument you put in front of him you could find something out of the garbage can from 1700 and he'd play it with a bow yeah. and picks wow somehow yeah. he just was born with a talent everybody in this room's got a god-given talent yeah mm-hmm. and uh his was a stringed instrument. he found it yeah i told him it's not drums because of yeah which, you taught me that first beat the one two three four and you just couldn't do anything else for me so yeah uh, uh john bonham gave me the rest of that yeah, 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 yeah exactly <laughs> but mm. thank god that they gave me they're great parents, and they bought me a drum set, stuck me out in the garage, and I was there for many years. Yeah. Yeah, and tell me about your mom. I mean, what is your mom's hobby? What does she like doing? Well, mom likes to keep dad straight. It's one of the biggest hobbies. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah. Is that a full-time job? Uh, it's or? A, yeah, it takes three people to keep dad going. <laughs> yeah. But, no, she's a wonderful, God-fearing woman that's yeah. raised me in the, in, the, in the best environment possible. Would get up and work at 5 a.m., yeah, you know, yeah, when you know, I, I bet you, know, you were just a pain in the bus, yeah, huh? Yeah, she worked many years and did just terrible yeah. jobs to keep things yeah. going. And dad too. Moms are yeah. the best. I hear, yeah. I hear Moms these the checks best. that they get. That's 112 every two weeks, and I'm like, how did yeah. they raise us? You know. Yeah. But we had the oh, best yeah. life back yeah. then. Didn't have to worry about a phone. Yeah. All I could hear is mom yelling. Get home. It's time for supper, and I was like, "It's seven o'clock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can eat at nine. I'm young. I've got yeah, a big yeah, metabolism." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, um, moms are. You know, it's amazing uh, on the parent front. It's amazing how impactful they are in our lives, oh, yeah. Yeah. especially moms. I mean, we're all special place. Yeah, we're all mama's boys. I mean, you know, we. You know, some of us don't act like it, but we're all mama's boys. Yeah. But but it, it, as a parent. Uh, man, we it's such a duty and it's such a, a crazy thing to have kids that are our kids and try to be good parents. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and in my case, especially when I didn't have some of the examples, you, you're mm-hmm. lucky in that regard because yeah. you've got a great mom and dad in mm-hmm. which you could be a good father to your daughter. And, man, it's a good trickle down, yeah. and it's an amazing thing. And I think yeah. sometimes we take it yeah. for granted. We want to we want to show our success for, by being a business owner and being busy and – you know, think that we're cool, tough guys by work, 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 work. But when all, all, all honesty, we just need to look around and look at our family yeah. mm-hmm. and go, man, I'm the luckiest man on the in the world yep. because look what I have. And it you took know. me 15 years to get out of that, what you mentioned, too. Sure, uh, absolutely. I, family's always been the most important to me. But, uh, you know, I even tell these young people, you're going to look at your parents now, and, they, you know, you know it all right now. Yeah. And we, we respect that you know what you know because of Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, and it, as time goes on, you're going to be more and more interested in your parents, more and more yeah. falling in love with them, more and more saying, you know, I'm sorry, more yeah. and more as you you did this for me, and I understand and why I now. I appreciate it. Yeah. yeah, I tell you, one of the greatest things, uh, and we'll get back to music stores. We always kind of div- di- divert and get onto family stuff. But uh, uh, several well, family years is ago, music. So it is. Awesome. Several years ago, my son called me. He was in Washington, and you know, like you, you talk about when you're a teenager. You know it all. And, uh, you know, as he was getting into his early 20s, he would call me and say, Dad, I need some advice. Mm-hmm. And, and and when that happens, that's you're better like, than money. Yeah, you're right. And, <laughs> and, and, and when that happens, you, you know, I remember I was on my car and I just remember stopping and going, wow, this is like one of the greatest honors as a parent for your, your kid to want you, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. and 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 what what you have to offer, and yeah. then I was like, man, maybe I did do things right, you yeah. know, because I'm always going, man, I really screwed up, or and of course, as parents, we do that. Yeah. It's part of us learning how to be parents, mm-hmm. but but when you get to that point where your kids actually seek you out. It's mm-hmm. a great feeling because you like, man, maybe maybe I did do it right. Yeah. So it's yeah. tough, man. I'll, I'll tell you, you know, my, I've got a 12 year old and 10 year old, and my daughter turns seven later this year. But I'll pray for you tonight. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. But you and know, I'll beat our, up anybody you need me to. Actually, thank you. 
<laughs> yeah. But uh, I'll tell you, it's our goal right now is is it, it man if we can if we can keep communicating with our children mm-hmm. to someday that they want to come back and actually spend time with us, yeah. then we did something right. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, and you yeah. know, and I hear so many people that they're just kind of like they had rough upbringings or they had altercations, you know, with their parents. And man, I guess I was just lucky. My parents were very good to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I was into playing sports, um, and um, my dad came to about every game he possibly mm. could he never missed it he was always there and so i do that so now i've, I've actually so i see it so my kids are into sports and my boys like to play flag football and i go to every practice i try to go to every game i try to be involved as best as i can because i'm in reality that's all we really have yeah mm. absolutely we have to support them yeah. and, and, and be a part of ultimately what they're doing and raise them up so that they can you know make their own choices but that's the big deal my, my wife whose name is hannah mm-hmm. is uh, we're just kind of like man we just we hope they want to come back and yeah. see us when well we get older, it's kind of crazy is my know? son he's he went to uh, from washington to knoxville yeah. to south carolina and then uh, he called me and he said hey dad i want to move back to spring hill that's where i live and i'm like oh that's awesome yeah um and he says can i come stay with you and then you know as a as an adult i kind of had mixed feelings for a second go you know, of course I do. No, you don't. You know, there's all this. And then I finally I, I thought to myself is like, man, this is a great opportunity. He's bringing his family mm-hmm. and I have a grandson into my house and they're going to hang out with me every day. Yeah. And I get to see this where he was in Washington and I didn't get to see him. Mm-hmm. You know, I see him once or twice. And, <clears throat> and now I get to too. see him. I get to see him all the time. You know, when I walk in the door, my my a grandson, which is crazy, you know, he's three years old and he's yelling, Grandpa, Grandpa. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. You know, I could have I could have been this this dad that says, nah, get your own place. Mm-hmm. But instead I said, No, man, you guys come into into my house and you stay as long as you want. I'll feed you, I'll take do yeah. whatever. And it's like, you know, you have a choice and that choice was well do what's right what's mm-hmm. right is to invite his family in and say yeah man i've got i've got my house is two and a half times the size that i need it mm-hmm. i mean i you know truthfully i need about 700 to three uh, thousand square feet i thought you made a little bit of that for me to vacate on <laughs> yeah well i've got a couple more rooms you can come down and stay but yeah it's crazy but 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 now i sit back and look and sometimes it gets loud and yeah. my my uh a grandson's running around, and sometimes I want to be quiet and you know, kind of decompress from a hard day. And then some days I just go, you know what? The heck with that. I'm gonna get loud with them. I'm gonna roll trucks yeah. around. I find myself going to the store, and I'm going to buy something, and then I go, I'm gonna go to the kids section, and I'll buy them. A, you know, I like Ford Broncos, the old ones, pre OJ. You know, the '66 <laughs> to '77s. So I'll go and buy some of them, and I see them, and I'll buy another one. I'll give him one. And I'm just like, well, that's that's fun, man. That's yeah. good stuff. But it's family. It's Dude, family. You're a grandpa. <sighs> He's kind of stressing me <laughs> out, man. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm uh, never going to be one of these. <laughs> well, you you better <laughs> hope not for a while. Yeah, right. You will be one. Yeah, because there will be a skin. You have to show me how to skin a deer. I can show way. you. Hey, I'll, we'll even <laughs> practice. Yeah. We'll even practice up there. We'll go to Knoxville. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll practice. So, yeah. anyways, what else on your music store? You've got um, a ton. Uh, and we're we're gonna wind down. I told him yeah. we'd only do this for no, thirty this minutes. Is okay. We've been I'm we've been going fun, so long. So. Good, okay, all right. Good. Well, I want to talk more about the music store. Um, it was cool the other day, and I say the other day. It was probably six weeks ago. We were at Epiphone. And uh, we were out there doing some different stuff, and and Will was talking real highly of you, you know. Oh, and yeah. Scott, we, yeah, we love Will. And Scott was talking highly yeah. of you, and and everybody was real, you know. We were everybody was talking very positive, and then you called, and then of course I was heckling you, calling you a big sissy, and and you immediately <laughs> I had no knew idea who for a minute. You can who say that anything was. on the phone, right? Well, I can, I can, <laughs> you know. I'm like four hours away. I'm What's glad you be? don't make, uh, you know. Google uh, comments on there. I've never been able to figure yeah, out who you are. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But after, the after a minute, you knew, you know. Yeah. But uh, but it, you know, it's amazing. These manufacturers think very highly of you. What what's some of the uh, uh, what's what's the reason behind that? Now, and then I'm going to tell you what 
uh, my reason is for being endeared to some of our dealers, but but how do you get well, so just, close just, to these just guys? Just like with you guys, uh, I I want to build a relationship with them. I mean, you know, point blank. If they don't, then I'm going to find somebody that does. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, Will will testify to this. It took me years. I would go to the Nam show and stand behind Will. And at then at that time he didn't know me at, at, on a, even on a friendship basis. Yeah. And I'd say one day I'm gonna I'm not ready yet, but one day I'm gonna have Epiphone. And you told me as well, be careful, Chris. You know, take your time. Mm-hmm. And I did. I mean, I had dreams and goals like I do every single day from mm-hmm. here on sure. out. Yeah. But we dealt with each other for a long time, yeah, absolutely. buying, and I would yeah. always sneak around and try to get his best stuff out of his <laughs> bin. Please, please, I mean, no, no offense to anybody else, but please let me be, you know, Richard, yeah. be my yeah. my go-to guy. Yeah. But uh, uh, that that progressed, and a lot of years of selling your all's products, mm-hmm. uh, and it, it wasn't that I didn't want to continue to buy. No, the, but I wanted to. You just grew, I had, I had you a grew dream. out of it. Yeah, well, I, well, no, I had a dream of of Epiphone and then Gibson, and it, plus I knew we needed it. We needed that market because yeah. we tested the waters with you stuff, and people were just they ate it up. They ate it up, and. Uh, you know, it's a household brand, and that's another thing me and you and as well you talked about uh, at this show. Uh, household brands, we can name four or five of them easily, and mm-hmm. so can the consumer. Yeah. But people are getting away from that more and more every day, looking yeah. for high-end quality products. And I search for that, too, mm-hmm. just to give them an alternative because, you you know, uh, the average musician, they have a Martin. They have a Taylor. They have a Gibson. They have a Fender. They have these products already. Yeah. And uh, – it's not like a car. You buy one automobile. You pick Ford, Chevy, Toyota, whatever. You don't, you know, mm-hmm. you don't cross fences there. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, know, I would never drive a Chevy. The active musician don't want to. Yeah, don't want to. Guy don't want to take the Martin out to the yeah. Tootsies and mm-hmm. get wild with it. You know, they want to take an Epiphone, or they yeah. want. I mean, it's no offense to the Epiphone or the Martin. It's just they have less investment. They have in less it. investment, and yeah. uh, they have back. You know, you get like my. Uh, I'm gonna plug you too. Isaac Harris mm-hmm. is one of my best friends down here in Nashville. He's active musician, and so is Riley Anglin. His dad's right back here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they'll wear a guitar out in six months because they're up at, at day and night writing yeah. songs, and you yeah. have to have more than one guitar. Yeah, Absolutely. sure. And I, I, I'm a firm believer in that shirt. You can't have too many guitars. Oh, yeah. I agree with and that. And if yeah. a woman objects, then they can't have too many pocketbooks either. Yeah. So. <laughs> and, and, and shoes. And shoes. Hey, yeah. Yeah. songwriters, I know, songwriters, I've had a couple guys that write songs for a living come in here, and they want to buy different guitars that inspire different songs. Yeah, different songwriting songs, versus different sounds. Yeah. Different yeah. sounds, different songs, and, and, and you need you, you need more than one tool to do that. I mean, Isaac tours everywhere. I mean, he's, I mean you just plug an input jack in and out of a guitar uh, mm-hmm. as many times as he yeah, does, and he's having to I maintain it. I yeah, mean, yeah. there's no guitar. Being yeah, we had we had a, a friend of mine's daughter is is downtown and she sings a ton and she plays a lot and she's always active. Mm-hmm. And she had two guitars that her, her electronics were just gone. Yeah, and every four and, to six months he needs a cajon because yeah. I, uh, his back started bothering him. I said, "Yeah, this is the way to go." He's using a stick and a mm-hmm. mallet, mm-hmm. and it sounds like a drum kit. I yeah, mean, it oh, might. Yeah. I mean, it's just as yeah. good as reaching it down. Wears and yeah. yeah, so yeah, um, but yeah, it's my dad as another. I call him the most neat hoarder on the planet because he's got <laughs> as much music as I do, plus other trinkets. Mm-hmm. Somehow the floor joists are holding up in the house, but yeah. <laughs> but it's very neat. Now, now, mom is a special person for putting up with that, but mm-hmm. uh, he has a weakness like <laughs> I do. Yeah. Moms you know, usually are the biggest man. therapy we need mm-hmm. is uh, musical therapy, but yeah. you know. Of buying too much stuff, but yeah. <clears throat> at the same time, we're not going to buy it if it's not a good deal and it's not worthy of, you know, being able to push so you don't the product. Feel, you don't feel like uh, getting all these lines today, and with you, you're doing too much because we see. No, uh, I, I'm doing what works for me. Okay. I don't. I don't want to. You know, and I'll. And I'll. Uh, no, it's offense, a calculated but, purchase. It's not. Yeah. You're just. You just want to go do out trial buy and error Absolutely. on certain lines okay. because if certain lines does not work for me whatsoever. Over a period of time, then it's time to move to a different line. Okay. And I'm not just line hopping. I mean, I, you know, if I get a certain line and there's no response to it whatsoever, you know, I grew out of blow it out. I grew out of the of like recording king guitars. Yeah. I, I can't move them. I yeah. used to move them when 15 years ago. They went through a phase when the Carolina yeah. series was wonderful, mm-hmm. and now there's not a bad guitar now. It's just. People are. You have to go with the people. Yes, absolutely. Just like you were saying with your kids, uh, guitars change 
mm-hmm. on a weekly to yearly yeah, basis. Absolutely. And they change. You've got to kind of adapt with them mm-hmm. and uh, not agree with everything they do, but you got to adapt with uh, the times and kind of change with it with the instruments. That's, yeah. a, that's exactly what Ryan said yesterday in our conversation. Where are yeah. you going to be at in five years from now? And he was like, well, my, my customers will determine Dictate that. At, yeah, five years from now. So. Yeah. so when it comes to customers, I mean, obviously you can't buy everything that they ask for. Right. But, you know, what is it? You, you hear two, three, four people ask for something, you go, well, maybe we really need that. Look I mean, this, is that yeah. what you look at? Yes. Or, or how do you, when you're going to look at a line uh, or someone presents you with a line, how do you make that decision, I need this in my store? Well, I don't want a line to uh, very much conflict with another line as well. But it, it has to be Give us a, an the, example the right of price that. point. Um, well, when you're looking at a, let's say an Epiphone is 369 mm-hmm. for for the two top selling guitars which would be a what a hummingbird and a dove yeah pro uh, you want to look at lines that's not going to be st- go head to head against that and they're gotcha. just going let me play this and it's 369 let me play that one it's 369 okay you know what i mean um in that respect you, you have to have er- everything has a price point 99 149 200 250 and i try to keep products that's the best and each price, price point. point. Okay, gotcha. That way, and if you believe in it, which I do because I'm going through quality control, and you know who yeah. quality control is, my old man. Yeah. I put every one of them in his hands, and if it doesn't thunder and sound good and sound good even on a recording, we have to move on to something that does. Interesting. And stuff that works for us. Like, uh, for example, a master built is always going to work for us, a yeah. master built. They uh, sound amazing. Yeah, and uh, and it's got its own price line. Mm-hmm. But if you start getting stuff that's six ninety nine, that's right – side of it mm-hmm. you know it, it, doesn't, it doesn't need any it stands on its own it doesn't need any competition so yeah. you don't want six or seven lines at 699 and yeah. they can't make up their mind because they're confused but enough, that's that's a good you know. that's a good point that you bring out i think a but lot having of guys, a variety of choices is a, is a really good thing too so you may have uh obviously you're trying to hit as many price points as you can and oftentimes you're not getting a, a guitar line that meets all of those price points it might be three or four lines yeah is that how you like approach there's it? yeah and for example there's diehard yamaha people yeah yamaha's got the price point covered all the way up so does epiphone there's diehard epiphone people they don't really conflict that much against each mm, other yeah. uh, same way seagull you have a seagull guy i want that thing because it's Made in Canada, it has Adirondack spruce bracing, it's got a pressure tested top. They've done their homework. They know all about the seagull. They've had a seagull before. They've, Great guitars. You know, but, but it's in a different league all its mm-hmm. own. I mean, you yeah. can spend as much as a thousand or more on a seagull. So, see, mm-hmm. it, everything has its own price point. Just like when the high end section, for example, the Laravie guitar, Gene Laravie's guitar line. Yeah, great. He stuff. has a great guitar in mm-hmm. a low price point all the way up to a certain price point. And then it stops, but you can go Brazilian if you want to go crazy with yeah, it. Yeah. But but he's got a niche from one price point to the other, and then the other guys, like say Bouget Guitars, they have an awesome price point from their price point on above that. Mm-hmm. And then you can go on beyond beyond them and go with Bourgeois or somebody mm-hmm. like that. That's a different name. Yeah, uh, Gibson, they have their price points. Mm-hmm. They're starting to open up the door to that fifteen hundred dollar price point where somebody yeah, that's right, the kid can save his allowance and get instead of. And have a Gibson, uh, yeah, and it would yeah. not be a twenty-seven fifty uh, Gibson. Okay, and so. so and so, how do the manufacturers uh, react when you say, "Yeah, you got a full line of guitars," and I appreciate that, and maybe you do this, but if you don't, and say, "But you know, I I am going to re- represent a lot of your catalog, but not all of it, because th- you've got some price points that just doesn't do well for me." Um, do you have those conversations with them, or you just buy what what you need to yeah, buy? And- so, yeah, sometimes I do. I mean, you know, the, and there's uh, if a line doesn't do well, I don't want to mention line names because I don't want to uh, sure, hurt any sure. lines. But uh, there's been a couple of lines that I have uh, kept. They have a full line of other accessories and other products that I've mm-hmm. kept and just not continue to order other lines okay uh, gotcha. there's two okay. that comes to mind but it's not a problem mm-hmm. they understand that we did that on a trial and error basis yeah, anyway yeah. so if and I it invest, just doesn't work in your if market i invest fifteen hundred dollars for example and buy four or five guitars 
to get to the test the waters mm-hmm. and it don't work out, they're not going to be sore at me because I spent 15 or 20 yeah. grand on the rest of their stuff. Yeah. Their yeah. amps and their other stuff. Sure. Yeah. One huge, huge critical thing I'll tell everybody, all the good stores that I've seen succeed has a lot of accessories. They have what people want. You can't go in and say, uh, I need these strings. You know, I've got those, but I don't have a strap. I don't have you know, uh, strap locks. I don't have bone nut and saddle today. I don't, you know, I don't like, that's my biggest fear is somebody walks in and says, uh, I need a pop filter. I don't have one. Mm. Oh, I need a boom mic stand. I don't have one. Can Mm. can, can I order it for you? Nobody. I mean, they want to Amazon. Amazon that you, they can do that their self. Mm -hmm. That's been the hardest thing to overcome is Anybody can ride down the road and hit the buttons on their phone and order something. They don't want me to do it for them. They they, they think it's easier for them to do it. I agree with you. So mm-hmm. I want stock. I want I want a lot of accessories. Mm-hmm. And I want to. I, I start panicking if I get down to five cables and it's not deep with cables because sometimes people come in and grab five cables at yeah, one time. Yeah, then you're out. I have studios come in and buy seven, eight mm-hmm. uh, these mic cables. Sorry to mean to hit that, but <laughs> and this right here is a. I mean, I keep cartons of this stuff. Yeah, because it works. I yeah. mean, it definitely works. And it, um, you know, strings. You you have to have a wall full of strings. Mm-hmm. I don't have every single brand, but I have the strings that work for me. And I listen to my customers. If they come in and say, "Man, that, I th- want to thank you for," I've had a lot of people come back saying, "Thank you for the New York XLs, the new, you know, strings in the black pack that are mm-hmm. electrics that are doing so well." And then they, uh, it's Elixir company too. They love Elixir. They love Diadario. Mm-hmm. They love Ernie Ball. So mm-hmm. those are my top three, and I tell people that's what 99% of my customers want. So if they come in asking something off the wall saying, you know, I want some Black Diamond or I want this or that, I'm not, you know, I've heard of them, but I'm not going to just go out and order cartons of it just because sure, sure. one guy asked for it. But yeah. Yeah. you've got to have the bread and butter. Yeah. You have to have yeah. the little stuff to get them to come back to get the big stuff. Yeah. yeah. Or if at least man, have something close. You would have something close. Yeah. You could say, I don't yeah. have that, but I have this. Yeah, try comparable. these. Yeah. yeah. I've even offered to say, here, try these. If you don't like them, I'll buy them back. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah. Yeah, just because I'm confident man, in my products. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's I mean, really good. I can't do that every time, but, you know, I'm I'm really confident in stuff. And, yeah. you know, if a string breaks on you the first show, we're going to – my company's going to back it up, too. Yeah. They're going to send me a pack of strings, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I deal direct with them. Yeah. Another thing, it took me from zero to 15 years. Mm-hmm. I didn't do this overnight. It took me 15 years of long – I mean, seven days a week to deal – I would buy from distributors, then start dealing directly with the manufacturers. Mm-hmm. So it takes a long time to yeah. do that. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Now, how did how did you build up? Because you're t- we're talking a lot about oh. 15 years worth of stuff. So uh, uh, we have uh, I see a lot of dealers that they want to instantly overnight. They want to just just. Mortgage the house mm, and fill no. up, and every, every no, don't do that. They they <laughs> no. scare me to death when they do that. Um, and I've told this story uh, uh, before, where I had a dealer that one time he wanted to he he bought about twenty thousand dollars a month from me. He was mm-hmm. a big dealer, but at Christmas time he wanted to buy forty five thousand dollars worth, and I told him no. Now mm-hmm. how many how many people is going to turn? that kind of purchase down mm-hmm. but i said no absolutely not if your month is going good then i'll turn mm-hmm. around and we'll build you more mm-hmm. we'll, we'll, if you if you if you sell 45,000 we'll we'll get it to you but i'm not going to take your money mm-hmm. and he was mad at me well mm-hmm. say you have instances i can't name any information or names but people's lives uh, something can snap and change in an instant i mean oh, yeah. you you know this everybody yeah. knows this you can be i can i'm i'm my own employee. Yeah. I mean, if I don't come into work and he'll tell you, Rick will tell you, you're your own boss. Those nobody else going to step up and take yeah. take yeah. in your place. Yeah. Uh, so you have to be prepared for those types of yeah. emergencies. And uh, you know, uh, I know the good Lord will provide. However, we have to be smart and you have not, to use wisdom. Yeah. You yeah. can't mm-hmm. owe a big payment plus uh, mm-hmm. three thousand rent every month. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So I so recommend. so how do you build that up? I mean, is it you, all the money over time? I mean, I've I've really just put it back in the business. Put it right back. Put it right mm-hmm. back for years and years and years. I'm telling you, we hear that over and over again by successful for people that yes. are successful. Yeah. But again, keep on. No, don't forget what your bread and butter was. Still throw the hundred dollar guitars. Still throw the two hundred dollar guitars because the guy that buys that ninety nine dollar to two hundred dollar mandolin or guitar goes and tells everybody where he got it from. Yeah, or he's going to come back and buy. Yeah, another and he's going to buy the accessories and the accessories off of it is more, means more to you than the sale of the little cheap instrument. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, he's going to tell his 
his friends, well, I got my strap over there. You can get one over there too. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a domino effect. I call Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, we don't have a Walmart uh, mm-hmm. to go get. And thank God, well, I hope we Not ever yet, have. Yeah. If that case, well, I'm just going. Well, as long as you do as your door greeter, I can't do it any other yeah. way. But <laughs> well, as long as you do your job, they have no reason to. Yeah. But but what we talked about in the beginning about customer service yeah. and building a family relationship mm-hmm. with people, mm-hmm. wanting to know about them, wanting to know what they do. Where do you mm-hmm. play? I mean, is there any way I can help you? Put flyers on my window here. Yeah, you, you've got a band coming up next weekend. Put it up there. You got a gospel group coming through town. I want it to be advertised. Yeah, yeah, um, and, that's great. And doing that, they don't have that. Uh, they have a one-on-one relationship with you that mm-hmm. it's just unbeatable over time. You well, something that you're you're talking about is something that we try to have a philosophy, and I even shared it with another. Um, uh, it was Saturday with with someone who's up and coming. Actually, you got to meet him, mm-hmm. um, and and you actually bought a couple of his guitars and really liked oh, yes. them. <laughs> um, and yeah. and I sat there, and um, I just told him, "I'm going to help you out." Mm-hmm. And then they're they're looking at me like. Did you notice their enthusiasm though and humbleness? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and and I told them I said I'm gonna help you out. Great people. Mm-hmm. And and my thought is if we just give stuff away, meaning give people help, if we mm-hmm. connect people, and you're talking about putting a flyer up on a window for a, for a trap, it doesn't hurt you. It doesn't mm-hmm. cost you. If anything, it, it endears them to you. Mm-hmm. And so I think more of us need to to quit hoarding and quit quit building walls, and we need to start. Helping people, giving stuff away, mm-hmm. um, introducing people. I, you know, I said, "Hey, hold on, let me introduce this person to that person, so you guys can work together and be friends, and you can do business together." And uh, they're like, "Really?" And I met so many wonderful contacts. Yeah. Right on down to, I saw a guy walking around with a guitar, and I saw the emblem on it, and I said, "Oh my goodness, I didn't. I, he's got to be a representative of this brand." Mm-hmm. He was wandering around, and we made a connection. Furch Guitars. Oh, okay. Oh, Furch. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And. We, and uh, yeah. Yeah. We met them. And the reason I know about the, that brand, well, it's a long story, but the shortest story is a person came in with a, a guitar and we changed strings on it, and I begged them to let me buy it from them. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's one of those things because I was so impressed with the guitar. Mm. Uh, he wanted too much for it, though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm a dealer, so. Yeah. But yeah. That left an impression on me. You okay. know, not all, not every time do you get to string somebody's guitar and hit the first chord on it and you're impressed yeah. so wow. much you'd like to buy it. But, yeah. Um, little companies like that, you want to you at least get a relationship going with. Absolutely. Because um, I've had so many people, I'm not going to name names, but I've had a lot of people be mean to me because they've never been in my store. Mm-hmm. And, you know, there's people that might frown on MRC because they've never been here. Mm-hmm. That's their fault. Yeah. I'll tell yeah, you that. Yeah. That's their fault. And they should uh, dart the mm-hmm. doors. And back to what we had talked about this weekend, not naming any names, but we had a lot of people underestimate the fact that our booth would just be a joke. Meaning we didn't have all the old 1940s, 30s, 40s, mm-hmm. 50s guitars, but we did have Vince, uh, we did have Vince Gill poking over the back of the booth and looking at my ugly stuff, <laughs> my, <laughs> my new Chinese stuff. But guess what? Twenty instruments went out the door. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, on that, that, that they topic, said, why would you bring that in here to start with? Yeah, and but and, we cost and twenty sold. because twenty instruments left the building. Yeah, and and the question, the question. Um, Man, I, I got to watch what I'm saying because I know exactly who you're talking about. Well, and I, I, mean, I feel I, the it, same it, way. It, it, it could just be, you know, a lot of people had judgmental feelings about it. it it's not just one person, but it's we know, yeah. Well, but 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 the funny thing is, is I think he and, and I'm not just stroking you. I think he had one of the best looking booths, <laughs> oh, yeah. and and a lot of people agreed, or you wouldn't have sold anything. Well, and I want to tell people it was my first booth, and I also tell people there's a lot of praying involved because <laughs> I've well, never yeah. done that before. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, I believe. It was. It worked out great because of the sure did uh, the enthusiasm, and now I'm more fired up to do another one. Yeah, yeah. Are we going. Yeah. You want to go to Atlanta with us? Well, we, we need to talk <laughs> oh, about man. that. We, hey, I have people beating funny. my door down the whole time. You know what's funny on that here. topic, and and I don't want to be too much of a squirter, even though I'm going to be. Is we didn't even get invited. They went up and looked at us. Well, I'm and, inviting you. You, okay. can come, you can be in my booth. Okay. Well, I'll they, they came up and looked at, at our stuff, and there. they just kind of shrugged their shoulders and walked away. We had that happen two or three times. Not me. And I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" But anyways, it doesn't matter. That all goes back to what I was talking about. If you, I call it never grow never grow past your britches size. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Stay a 38 absolutely. if you're a 38. You know. Well, you know, it's funny is the guy next to us, and I forget his name, you, you re, you'll you probably remember with a slide, slide yeah. 
you know, he's a, he was a, a guy out there that was talking about he, he was selling slides and and he's like, man, I just want to sell enough to break even. And he mm-hmm. told me all the insights, but he believed in his product so yeah. much that he flew out from L.A., had a sales pitch, was very professional, a good product. Great and presentation. A great presentation, super nice guy. And you know what? Man, I go, you know what? I'm going to help this guy. And so uh, these guys each bought a slide. Mm-hmm. But you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to advertise them on this podcast free, mm-hmm. absolutely free. Yeah. And I'm going to plug him. Uh, Nate and I are going to do a, a recap in, in maybe in a few days. Mm-hmm. But we're going to talk about this, and we're going to help this guy. Why? Mm-hmm. Because he was a super nice guy. Right. He's just trying to be in the industry. Mm-hmm. You know, no, he didn't have a, 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 a you know a, a cool '59 Les Paul original and all this fancy schmancy stuff, which is cool stuff. I like it. Don't get me wrong. But he's just out there trying to make a living yeah. in mm-hmm. the music industry. Yeah. And, and instead of shrugging our shoulders and rolling our eyes yeah. i was like i'm gonna help this guy yeah man. his uh, we can throw him out right now for just a bit cole coleman with the thimble slides yeah thimble mm-hmm. slides yeah, just, what's his great. website his uh actually uh, i'm sure it's probably thimbleslides.com but and um, and on, on an episode we'll, we'll make yeah, sure that we'll we're make right sure on we have the right but it's yeah. a very cool product that everybody needs to check it out stores that are listening need to check it out because uh, uh he does sell to a lot of stores and he's a super nice yeah. guy and uh i hope he sells a pop of these things but anyways i'm off my rant well <laughs> it was just going to show that there's a lot of people out there that uh, i thought what was great from the weekend that i got to saw is that people were being innovative yeah that people are out there trying to create they're trying to make the guitar better every single yeah. day mm-hmm. and they're not just relying on other people doing it but they're literally getting in their garages and they're creating new new yeah. products that are great uh, and I thought that that show was a great way to do that. So yeah. then they make connections like you, and they find a great product. And then mm-hmm. and then Cole Coleman, I mean, you can uh, yeah. get him on there, and you can carry his slides in your store. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a great, it's great relationship. Stuff. Oh, I fell into temptation at the bell when the bell rang. Mm-hmm. I to couldn't go let I couldn't stuff. no I couldn't let one leave the building. So. Uh oh. Yeah. 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 Uh, it, it's a long future plan, but I'm sure my dad will take it from me. Uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm gonna have to get what? Uh, let's see, three months work out of him for this thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's. I'll give them a shout too. It's uh, Neville. I can't pronounce it right. N e v. Neville, oh, Neville guitars, Neville, that's t- yeah, tellies. Yeah. Okay, we're off the chain. I mean, okay. I don't actually. Yeah, man, they had some great flame maple tops on yes, those guitars. Yes. I took a I few didn't pictures see any of, of those. Yeah, oh, they were yeah. kind of over on the other side towards well, the food. Come court. up that's and you'll see one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, or we'll, two. We'll be barbecue and looking <laughs> yeah. cool guitars. Oh yes. man, they were great looking guitars awesome. actually. Well, we but, we probably got to wind down. I mean, I think we. I'm just getting fired up. My coffee must have been tricked. Yeah, yeah. But in closing thoughts, talk. To, uh, about your store, what's the uh, some of the I things? I want to hit Obviously, two things that okay. uh, there, there's two people that told me that if you don't get a, a you're gonna fall asleep at the wheel if you don't do two things. Okay, one is start uh, getting on the social media bandwagon. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Reverb Store uh, dot my Reverb Store. Yes. so it's Honeycut Great Music company. slash mm-hmm. uh, Shop slash Honeycut yeah. Music or Reverb. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Reverb Store slash yeah. Shop slash Honeycut Music. Yeah, they also built me in my website, which is Honeycut Music Store dot yeah. com. Okay, some other dude jacked my name up. I don't know what he did. He must have had a Chinese guy. Yeah, yank it from me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good with computers, so yeah. who knows? I could be hacked tomorrow. Yeah, but anyway, I got those two things going full blast. I also do Shopatron. Which okay. is uh, I don't know what that it's is. hit and miss. It's a, is that like a well, Shopify almost. It, well, it's a lot of companies participate in it. Some of my dealers participate in it, and you can go on there and actually buy, and then they let me fill the orders. Like Dean Guitars is oh, great yeah, with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Schecter Guitars yeah. and a few others. Okay. There's a lot okay. of manufacturers that yeah. use that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm constantly working those three outlets plus the store. Okay. So when your store is going low, you need to be going high on, on reverb. You need to get rid of birthday things I say is birthday stuff. Yeah, we talked about it a couple stuff. episodes ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Even though it's cool to look like your store's full, you need to keep that inventory keep moving. Keep it turning. And and another thing I recommend is it, I'm working out of four thousand square feet. I used to be in two. I used to be in under a thousand feet, but mm. I'd constantly keep that stuff fresh and moved yeah. around. You don't want to walk in for six straight months and say that guitar's in the no same way. spot and I it's agree. looking at I you agree. in the eyes. No birthdays. Uh, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. But you've got to constantly doll up the store. And I've Absolutely. paid guys as much as five hundred dollars to move um, I've got a genius that does this. He can he can put ten thousand square feet in four 
easy. Wow. Mm. He just knows how to stack and keep the fire marshal away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think they must be friends or something. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> no, he's yeah. just the best. I want him yeah. to reorganize my home or my my family's home. It's just yeah, he's yeah. that good. Yeah. But yeah. some people's again, like I said, everybody's got their own gift. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Mine was not playing the guitar, but selling the guitar. That's all right. Mine and too. When mine you can't too. give a drum set away, you better find some way to eat. Yeah, absolutely. My dad told me, I went to my dad and I begged him. I said, please, dad, teach me how to string a guitar like uh, Martin. You know, like they do theirs. Yeah. Tr- teach me how to work on a guitar. Mm-hmm. And two people that did that, y'all saved me because I come down here to a class and learn how to work on a guitar. No, oh, okay. Remember that? Mm-hmm. I remember that. I attended that. the class, but I had a little bit of uh, attention deficit mm-hmm. disorder because I was out here wanting to buy stuff from you. Yeah. Oh, I know. Uh, in between, but I still we were learned a lot. trying to get yeah, you back in you class. Wandering out there. I still uh, filled that hole that I drilled in the neck of that and made it look pretty. <laughs> I, <think. laughs> I don't know if Riley finished it for me. I think Riley did the finish hey, work. You know, while the, I was the good thing about those workshops too is is people find out that they shouldn't be working on guitars too. Yeah, so. yeah. If you need funny. me to tear up something, I'm the best at it. But You're if you best, want me to put it back together, Rick behind me here is the greatest okay. at it. Yeah. That's and, why you and guys talk are about a, tag a true team, friend. Huh? I mean yeah. he's a, one of the greatest friends anybody could ever ask for. Yeah. Right. A good Dave. tag team. Cool. Yeah. So. Awesome. Well uh, it's we a good appreciate- thing he don't play an instrument because he would be broke, man. We're yeah. just we're <laughs> I'd, I'd be selling him something every day. So I need to eat Rick. You know all right well we're gonna close out here Again, so, we appreciate you coming thank back. Thank you all. Yeah, I, I, we want to We want to have you come back more. Uh, you know, I, you know, whenever you're in town, because uh, it's fun. It's fun to talk about stores. Uh, I know some might think it's kind of a boring topic. In some ways, it, it it could be, but we try to spice it up. And there's a g- lot of good information when we're talking about business and um, and turning product and lines. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff out there. So I'll we'd give love you a to secret. have you. Out. They want me down here. Who but, does? Uh, a lot of people want me to open a second location. Down Do here. it. Well, I, there's only one of me, but <laughs> yeah, yeah I, uh, I mean, it's it's it could be a future thing. I, when I mentioned yeah. I need a summer home down here, yeah, yeah. I need a uh, I need to study about that a lot. But well, I, need, I know all the manufacturers that I talk to, and then yeah. I'm in uh, uh, have a relationship with. They love you, so you obviously are doing something. They told right. me just to get beside of any GC I can find and just start opening stores. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah. I don't want them to do that to me, so I wouldn't do that to them. Well, <laughs> it was just a joke. It's but. not a bad idea. Yeah, know. that we that we do feed off each other and I, you know i used to have a uh i don't know a not a chip on my shoulder but uh didn't understand how they operated the way they do but mm. now i've become really i got a really loving relationship the one down here yeah in particular yeah. they're yeah. great people I, I i highly recommend yeah. them well they i, I highly really, recommend anybody i don't want anybody to ever not succeed in the music yeah. business Absolutely. why because i know how tough it is it is it's very very tough. tough absolutely so god help everybody with the music absolutely business. Yeah, i agree with you good. and that's you know that's a lot of our theme is just everybody help each other out there's mm. enough money to go around you mm-hmm. know we might as well help each other out so absolutely awesome again thank you very much thank we're gonna you, do it Chris, again appreciate it yeah appreciate and you uh all. nate close us out here yeah man we appreciate it. it was another great episode so i'm glad we got to connect and you got to come in town this weekend thankful to you. awesome that we got to learn more about your show it is honeycutmusic.com Honeycutmusicstore.com. Honeycutmusicstore.com. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody go check him out. This is a awesome great place. dude. He will take care and if of you. And if you're going through the Qua- or the Tri Cities, make sure you stop there. That's right. So. Absolutely. Right. We appreciate right. it. 19. Man. Yep. yep. All right. Thanks. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you all. Appreciate mm-hmm. it.